Hi there, welcome to an A2 micro revision presentation looking at aspects of business objectives and pricing strategies. We know that businesses have many different objectives. Indeed, businesses may pursue multiple objectives at any given moment in time. The standard assumption of neoclassical economics is that businesses are maximizers choosing a price and output which maximizes profit. But the reality is often very different. Businesses might be driven by the need to maximize revenue or growth of output or market share. In a recession, survival may become the main instinct of a business. And we know that there are many businesses in the social enterprise sector, for example, that are not just for profit or businesses owned by the state where social considerations may, may also come into play. So objectives are often driven by managerial motives. Indeed, if the managers have more of a say in day-to-day -day decision making, they may have moved towards revenue and growth maximisation rather than profit maximisation. Keep in mind also that in imperfectly competitive markets, such as oligopoly, the pricing decisions taken by firms are not independent, but interdependent. We have to think about the likely reaction of the other rival companies, both inside and potentially outside the market, to your decisions. My instinct is that most businesses are actually satisficers rather than maximizers. They're looking to make a satisfactory rate of return on their investments rather than maximizing the profit from every single unit sold. Pricing is also impacted by regulatory interventions, for example, price capping in markets. Equally, more firms are now using big data, accessing incredible amounts of detail about consumer buying behavior, digital profiles, etc., to drive both revenue and profit. I'll have a look at that in a second. But consumers are also sensitive to what they perceive to be fair and ethical pricing policies. So businesses have to take into account the likely reaction of consumers to their pricing, particularly in an age of social media, where the feedback loops are particularly powerful and often immediate. So let's look at some of the analysis of business objectives and pricing strategies. The first one, of course, is to think about the standard assumption of profit maximisation. Uh, to, to do this, we think about the idea of marginal profit, which is the increase in profit when one more unit is sold. In our output here, uh, marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, and therefore the marginal profit is positive. A firm will be adding to its total profits by producing this unit. However, if it goes beyond the point where MR and M MC are equal, the marginal profit becomes negative. Selling this unit would be causing total profits to go down, because marginal cost is greater than marginal revenue. Of course, this means that you maximise your profits at the output where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. This, of course, assumes we know what the marginal cost and marginal revenue conditions for business are. So here's uh, our standard diagram showing profit maximisation for a firm at output Q1, marginal revenue equals marginal cost. You can take it up to the demand curve to find the equilibrium price um, paid by consumers. The unit cost of Q1 is shown by C1 using the average cost curve. And the difference between price and cost is supernormal profit. This firm is making a profit higher than the minimum they need to stay in the market in the long run. So this is the standard assumption of uh, theory of the firm, which we, of course we, we challenge and we question that firms are profit maximizers. An alternative is to maximise revenue rather than profit. And the business maximises revenue where marginal revenue is zero, halfway down the demand curve, when the marginal revenue curve cuts the x-axis. We can see that the firm is still making a profit here because price is greater than average cost. But a revenue maximising firm, if that's their main objective, will produce a higher output at a lower price than the profit maximising firm. An alternative is to go further to drive sales, to drive output, to increase production to a level where average cost equals average revenue. In other words, where normal profits are being made. This is the sales maximization output, where the business sells as much as possible without making a loss. An alternative, again, to these is to satisfice. There's no unique satisficing output. Q1, we know, is the profit maximizing level of production. Q2 is a level of output which is higher, price is lower, P2 compared to P1. The firm is still making some profit, but as you can see, the green area, the profit area there, is lower than it would be if they produced at Q1. 
So satisficing involves some sacrifice of uh, total profit, but again, in terms of other aspects, perhaps market share uh, and managerial objectives links to, for example, the size of bonuses and job security. So let's make a summary of business pricing and business objectives. If the firm is, if the firm's dominant objective is profit maximization, they'll choose an output where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. If the firm's main objective is revenue maximization, they'll choose an output where price, that marginal revenue equals zero. If the business's objective is sales maximization, they'll price it an output where average revenue equals average cost. And if they're satisficing, well, that's any price greater than or equal to the average cost, but less than the profit maximizing price. Limit pricing is another type of objective. This is where firms are thinking about trying to prevent the profitable entry of a new rival firm. That involves some sacrifice of short term profits, and it's any price at which a potential rival cannot make a normal profit if they enter. If you want more detail on limit pricing, just check out limit pricing on our Google or YouTube site. Okay, many firms, of course, charge more than one price for their product. Indeed, most firms now price discriminate or use different forms of dynamic pricing. Some will enter and nudge towards first degree where they charge individual consumers uh, the price that they're willing and able to pay. Oftentimes, firms engage in second degree discrimination where the price charge varies by the quantity sold. People might be able to negotiate a bulk by discount, for example, or the price varies by time of purchase peak versus off-peak prices, etc. Third degree discrimination involves segmentation of the market and charging a different price for the same good or service to different groups of consumers. And they might be segmented by their elasticity of demand, by their income, by their age, by their gender, by their ethnicity, by any uh, salient uh, discriminatory tactic. My own personal favourite type of discrimination is the hurdle model. This is where consumers can negotiate a lower price or get a discount but to do so, they have to overcome some kind of hurdle. So, for example, significantly cheaper prices for nearly new products, discounts for consumers who were prepared to, uh, to be patient and collect coupons, a cheaper paperback, which is often way cheaper than a hardback a few months after the hardback's released. If you go into a computer games store, you might be able to get a big discount on a, uh, on a game that's been once or rarely used. And people might be prepared to wait right up to the last minute to get a discounted ticket for the theatre. But of course, take the risk, the hurdle that they miss out on the ticket altogether. And sometimes stores offer in-store discounts, a generous price discount, but only for customers who visit the store on a given day. This is the hurdle model of price discrimination. So we've looked at different business objectives and how it affects the pricing strategy.